For the simplified dartless bodice block would need few measurements. The first measurement is the front waist length, which is taken from the highest point of your shoulder to your waist. So the highest point of your shoulder is the point that is very close to your neck. So take the measurement from this point down to your waist. By the way, we won't be needing this measurement to draft this bodice. We only need it for reference purpose. Okay. The next measurement is the back waist length, which is taken from the same highest point of your shoulder to your waistline at the back. Okay. So you want to make sure you're taking it from the same point you took the front waist length at the back. So the back waist length is the measurement we'll be using to draft for both the front and the back. Usually the difference between the back waist length and the front waist length is about one inch and above. There are very few people who has the same back waist length as their front waist length. But I would advise if the difference between your back waist length and your front waist length is more than two inches, you would have to apply a different approach to draft the dartless bodice block. Okay. Because if you go ahead and draft it the same way, you might have some, some implication that you might not like. So make sure you take note of this. Um, the next measurement would need is the nape to waist. So the nape to waist is taken from the prominent bone at the back of your neck. So if you place your head downwards and allow your sheen to touch your chest, you feel that prominent bone at the back of your neck. So you want to take the measurement from that prominent bone to your waist. By the way, you can use this measurement to estimate your back waist length for small to medium sizes. To get your back waist length, you need to add three quarter of an inch to your nape to waist measurement. So this is going to give you the back waist length for larger sizes, add one inch to your nape to waist measurements. Okay. The next measurement we need is the shoulder length, which is taken from the highest point of your shoulder to the lowest point of your shoulder. So you want this measurement to be just by your neck point to get the accurate shoulder length and also make sure this measurement ends at the lowest point of your shoulder. The next measurement would need is the neck width. I've done a tutorial on how to take this neck width measurement, but you can do an estimate to get this measurement. So I would advise for small to medium size, you can use 2.5 to 2.75. Then for larger sizes, you can use three inches to three and a half inches. Some people generally use three inches, but I really don't like how three inches looks on my neck personally. So I use two and a half inches as my neck width. So mind you don't use anything less than two and a half inches. Okay. All right. Moving on. The next measurement would need is the bust circumference, the waist circumference and the hip circumference. Lastly, we need to take the length of the dress. So I'm going for a shorter length, which is above my knee. So I'm going for a length 34 inches. So you can choose whatever length you desire for this. You can make it shorter. You can make it longer. But for this tutorial, I'm using a shorter length that is above my knee. Every other measurement would need, we would estimate it as we go about drafting this bodice block. Now let's start drafting. Now I'm going to square down a horizontal line, which is located one inch below the top of my pattern paper. Now from this horizontal line, I'm going to mark my back waist length. So I'm using my nip to waist measurement plus three quarter of an inch. So if you are on a larger size, you should use your nip to waist plus one inch, or just go ahead and take your back waist length directly on your body. 
okay so now I'll mark this point and square out horizontal line this horizontal line is going to be the waistline for both the front and the back now from this waistline I'm going to mark down 9 inches to get my hip line so this 9 inches is standard for a personalized fit you should just take the body measurement from your waist to your hips whatever you get you can measure down from your waistline and then square across our horizontal line to get your hip line now from the top line I'm going to measure down the full length of my dress I'm working with 34 inches so this length is above my knee okay now I'm going to square out horizontal line this is the M of the dress the next line we need to establish is the bust line because this is a simplified method of drafting a dartless body, I'm going to give you a formula that works. So the formula is taking your nip to waist measurement and dividing it into two. Once that is done, you want to subtract one inch. So my nip to waist measurement is 15 and quarter. So dividing it by two is going to give me 758. Now I'm going to subtract one inch. This will give me 658. Now you need to take this measurement from the waistline and measure upward this distance. So once this is done, you want to square out our horizontal line right across. This line becomes the bust line for both the front and the back. Now we are done with creating our construction lines. We're going to start drafting the pattern. Now the left hand side of the pattern paper will be my center back why the right hand edge of my paper is going to be the center front now on the top line i'm going to mark my neck width i'm using two and a half inches remember i said you can use a minimum of two and a half inches to three inches okay so you can use two and a half inches or you can use two and three quarter inches or you can use three inches or you know three and a half inches so do what works for you now from the edge of my paper which is the center back I'm going to mark in two and a half inches and then I'm going to come down from the top line and mark three quarter of an inch remember I got my back waist length using my nip to waist measurement plus three quarter of an inch so this three quarter of an inch is going to be the neck depth for my neckline so let's say you mark your you use your nip to waist measurement plus one inch to get your back waist length let the one inch be your neckline depth for the back now i'm going to measure down from the top line three quarter of an inch and then i'm going to use this dimension which is two and a half inches by three quarter of an inch to just draw out a small rectangle now from the center back i'm going to mark in one inch and then i'm going to use my french curve to draw out the neckline for the back bodies next we're going to establish the shoulder slope for the back from the top line i'm going to mark down one inch and using this one inch i'm going to square out just a short horizontal line this line is a guideline to create my shoulder slope now from this point which is the neck point i'm going to place my shoulder length measurement which is five and quarter inches plus half of an inch for ease I'm adding half of an inch for ease because this is a dartless body so you need some amount of ease all around your body so for the shoulder length I'm going to add half of an inch now I'm going to place my shoulder length measurement plus half of an inch ease on the neck point and pivot the tape until it touches the shoulder slope guideline once this is done I'm going to connect the neck point to this point on the shoulder slope line now from this point I'm going to square down a vertical line you want to make sure this vertical line is on a 90 degree angle for you to do this you need to take the measurement from the lowest point of the shoulder to the center back and then whatever you get place it on the bust line from center back inwards as a beginner you can do this to get a straight line Now, because this is a dartless bodice, you need some amount of ease on the bust. So I'm going to mark in from center back my bust divided by four plus one and a half inches ease. 
okay so you can use a minimum of one inch but for me I'm going to mark one and a half inches so this one and a half inches is going to give me a total of six inches is around the whole circumference of the bust depending on the kind of style you're going for you can connect this line straight down to the M okay but if you're going to connect this line straight down to the M you still you need to make sure that you have um, adequate ease on the hip area okay so if I connect this is ten and a half so if I connect ten and a half to the M of the dress I will not have any ease on my hips the only way I'm going to connect this point to the M is if I mark on this bust line my hips plus some ease on the bust line, then I can connect it straight. But if your hip circumference and your bust circumference are the same or almost the same, then you can connect this line to the M. But if your hips are bigger than your bust, you can't do this. So for me, if I connect this line to my M, I would only have I would not even have any amount of ease on my hips so I can't do that so take note of this now moving to the waistline you need to mark your waist circumference plus some amount of ease so I want this bodies to have just a little bit of curve so you need to take your waist measurement divided by four and add two inches for ease moving on to the hip line I'm going to mark my hip circumference divided by four plus half of an inch. So this half of an inch is going to give me two inches ease around the whole circumference of my hips, which is adequate for a dartless bodice. Although you can use more, but I would not advise you use anything less than two inches ease around the whole circumference of the hips on a dartless bodice. Next, I'm going to bring the measurements I place on the hip line. I'll bring it down to the M line like so. Using a straight ruler, I'm going to connect the point on the bust line to the point on the waist line, and then I'll connect the point on the hip line to the M with a straight line. Then I'm using the curvy part of my French curve to connect the waist to the hip, like so. Next, we're going to draw the MO. So you need to take the, the measurement of this vertical line and mark the midpoint. Next, go in from the midpoint with quarter of an inch and then using a French curve, connect these three points together to draw the MO. Now you need to take the measurement of the back MO and just note this down. Now we're going to move over to the front. Um, the only difference between the front and the back will be from the bust line upwards. So all the measurements I marked on the bust line, on the waist line, on the hip line, and on the M line is going to be the same for the front. So right now I'm going to transfer those measurements to the front bust line, to the front waist line, to the front hip line, and to the front M line because they are the same, okay? All right. Now we need to create the neckline for the front bodies. I'm going to use the same neck width that I used for the back as the neck width of the front bodies. So from center front, I'm going to mark in two and a half inches. Now for the neckline depth, I'm going to add half of an inch to this measurement. So two and a half plus half of an inch is going to give me three inches. So three inches is going to be the neckline depth for the front bodies. Using this dimension, I'm going to draw out a small rectangle. And then taking my French curve, I'm going to draw out the neckline curve. For the shoulder slope, I'm going to come down from the top line one and a half inches. Okay, one of the reasons I'm coming down one and a half inches is because I want the front MO and the back MO to be equal. Okay, so you can come down one and a half inches to at most one and three quarter inches. Please don't come down anything more than 
one and three quarter inches, which is same as 1.75 inches. Okay. So by doing this, it's going to help me, um, equalize the front MO to the back MO. Now from the top line, I'm going to come down one and a half inches and then draw out a short horizontal guideline. Next, I'm going to place my shoulder length measurement plus half of an inch, just like we did on the back. I'm going to place it on the neck point of the front bodies and pivot the tape until it touches the shoulder slope guideline. Once this is done, I'm going to connect the neck point to this point on the shoulder slope line. Next, I'm going to connect this point to the bust line, making sure it's on a 90 degree angle. Next, I'm going to mark the midpoint of this vertical line. And from the midpoint, I would go in anything from half of an inch to three quarter of an inch for dotless bodies. Okay. So I would advise you go in first with half of an inch because the goal here is to make the front MO of equal length as the back MO. Okay. So you can start by going in half of an inch, then take the front MO measurement and compare it to the back. If it's shorter, then you can go in with three quarter of an inch. But after taking this measurement and it's still longer than the back MO, you can then come down from the shoulder slope with maybe one eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch more. But please do not go below one and three quarter of an inch for the shoulder slope. Now I'm going to go in with five eighths of an inch and then using my French curve, I'm going to connect to draw out the front MO. Next, I'm going to take the measurements of the front MO and hopefully I'm going to have nine and three quarter inches. And yes, guys, I got nine and three quarter inches, which is the same measurement as the back MO. And here guys, the simplified dartless bodies block is done. If you're going to use this bodies, you need to add in seam allowance and M allowance all over. Okay. And then you need to create an opening for the neckline. You can decide to put a zipper or you can decide to lower the front neckline so your head can go through. The next thing we need to do is to draft the sleeve for this bodice. Now the sleeve we're going to draft is a sleeve with a low cap height. So a low cap height sleeve is a kind of sleeve that allows for movement. And because this is a dartless bodice, we do not want um, the, the regular eye cap height sleeve that tend to restrict movement a little bit. So um, we're going to use a low cap height to draft the sleeve. First, you begin by placing your paper on fold like so. And then you draw the first horizontal line, which is one inch below the top of the pattern paper. So this is the top line. Now from the top line, you want to mark down your cap height measurement and square across horizontal line. This horizontal line is the bicep line. Now from the top line, you mark down the full length of your sleeve. So mine is six and a half as I'm going for a short sleeve. So you square across horizontal line. This line becomes the M line of the sleeve. And then I'm going to add in one inch M allowance. Now when taking the length of your sleeve, you also need to take the circumference measurement of that length. So this circumference measurement is your round sleeve. Now you need to add at least two inches ease or two and a half inches ease or more. So mine is 11 and a half plus two and a half inches ease gives 14. Now I'm going to divide this 14 inches into two. And from the center fold, I'm going to mark in on the M line, this seven inches. So this is my round sleeve measurement. Okay. Now this point on the top line, I'm going to mark point zero. Next, we need to impute our ammo measurement. To get your ammo measurement, you need to take the front ammo and the back ammo and add them together, then divide it into two. But my front ammo and back ammo are the same, so I'm going to take it at the front or the back. It doesn't really matter because if I add it together, it's definitely going to give me the same result. My ammo measurement here is nine and three quarter. 
So from point zero, I'm going to pivot nine and three quarter until it touches the bicep line. Now I'm going to mark a point right there. Note that this point is subject to change depending on our sleeve cap measurement. Okay, so if our sleeve cap measures the accurate ammo measurement, this point stays there. But if after measuring the the cap of the sleeve measures more than my ammo, then I have to move this point inwards or move it outward if it's less than my ammo measurement. Next, I'm going to connect the point on the bicep to point O on the top line. Now you want to divide this diagonal line into four equal parts like so. Now this point I'm going to label point 1, point 2, point 3, and point 4. Okay, now from point 1 you want to go upward 3 eighths of an inch. Whatever you came upward with on point 1, you want to go downwards on point 3 with half of that measurement. So half of 3 eighths of an inch gives 3 over 16 of an inch. So I'm going to come down at point 3 with 3 over 16 of an inch. Now I'm going to connect this point with a curved line passing through the point on point 1 to intersect with point 2 and continue the curve to the points below point 3 and down to point 4. So using my French curve, I'm going to connect this point like so. Now you need to measure from point zero the curve of the cap of the sleeve. So if this curve measures exactly your ammo measurement, you leave point four where it is. If after taking the sleeve cap measurement and it measures less than your ammo measurement, you need to move point four outwards. But if it measures more than your ammo measurement, then you need to move it inwards. Okay, the goal here is that you want your sleeve cap to measure at least your ammo measurement. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the sleeve cap measurement. So you want to carefully measure around the curve like so. And this gives me about 9 and 7 eighths of an inch. So that means it is 1 eighth of an inch more than my ammo measurement which is actually fine but because i don't want any amount of ease around the cap of the sleeve i'm going to move point four inward by one eighth of an inch so this will eliminate that excess which i have on the sleeve cap now i'm going to erase the previous point and then connect this new point four to the point on the m of the sleeve so you just want to use a slight curve to connect these two points together. So we're not done yet, but I'm going to go ahead and add in half of an inch seam allowance onto the side seam of the sleeve. Now along the curve on the sleeve cap, I'm going to measure upward half of an inch. So this is going to be the seam allowance. And then I'll connect like so. So along the sleeve cap, I have half of an inch seam allowance. On the side seam, I have half of an inch. On the M, I have one inch M allowance. So I'll go ahead and fold in the M allowance before cutting out the sleeve. And once you open your sleeve, you should have something like this. Now the left hand side is going to be the back of the sleeve, while the right hand side is going to be the front part. I'll go ahead and draw out the center line of the sleeve. So we need to 
um, shorten the sleeve cap of the front of the sleeve. This is the only difference between the front and the back of the sleeve. So from the center line, I'm going to measure in one inch. So from this one inch, I'm going to mark down one eighth of an inch. So I'll continue marking out this one eighth of an inch until I get to like one inch before the side seam of the sleeve. So for this, I'm just going to mark one inch in from the side seam. Now at this point, I'm going to mark down one eighth of an inch. Using my French curve, I'm going to draw out the sleeve cap for the front of the sleeve like so. So basically, we're just trimming off one eighth out of the sleeve cap of the front portion of the sleeve. So this is going to make the front of the sleeve a little bit lower than that of the back of the sleeve. So you want to cut in such a way that that one eighth of an inch you're taking out blends into the side seam and also blends into the center line of the sleeve. All right, at this point, we're done with drafting the sleeve. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, remember to like this video, leave a comment, share this video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section if you try out this pattern. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.